Hello and welcome to this new series that I'm going to try out where I'm going to go over some champion matchups and try and give you a visual, if you will, on how the laning phases went in those matchups. The most lopsided ones, maybe give you a reason as to why it occurred. Um, and uh, yeah, so identify some interesting things within a matchup. This, the Nara versus Gwen matchup, was the most common top lane matchup of Season 12. It occurred 100 times. Nar winning 58 of them. So, let's break that 100 down a little bit more. In the East, they played 85 of those games. West, 13, two international games, one at MSI, one at World. So, despite, um, obviously, the East playing way more games with best of threes, I mean, that's still a ton of games compared to the West, right? So, this was an Eastern matchup more so than a Western. Here, I've identified the top 21 Matchups that are um, determined by CS diff at 15 minutes. We're going to go over the three biggest gaps from each side of the matchup. On average, this matchup was NAR favored by two CS at 15 minutes. So what? On average, it was coin flip. It could go either way. Um, the median, three CS in NAR's favor. The most common result was 19 CS in favor of NAR occurring six times. Um, and not only that, out of the 21 matchups listed here, and I'm not going to, like I just said, I'm not going to go all, over all of them in depth. The NAR won all 11. So the NAR that got ahead by at least 21 farm won the game. Gwen's case, the biggest, the smallest gap on here is 21. And six out of those 10 games, excuse me, um, something just kind of spittled a bit, I think. Um, six out of those 10 matchups, the, um, the, the, the Gwen won. So it's actually kind of interesting to think about like all these matchups, the NAR was ahead, it wins. Gwen, not so much. Teams not snowballing those leads as efficiently. Um, so the biggest gap occurred by Wayward on top against Fearness in summer week nine, day five. The result was Wayward ahead by 43 CS at 15 minutes. Um, obviously way over here, it's harder to see. I intend on changing, you know, the side, the, this, this may be a little different next time if there is a next time. So, Wayward versus Fearness, Top versus LGD. Uh, my notes are here, so I'm going to kind of be reading off of here. Top would go top lane first to try and create a little bit of pressure, which gave Wayward a little bit of an edge. Um, later on, LGD would try and take Rift Herald and succeed. So Fearness goes and takes Rift Herald, which allows Wayward's Gwen to farm and get a little bit, you know, farther ahead. He would then force out Fearness's summoners, and Top would go to top lane a second time successfully and further pushing Wayward ahead. He ends up ahead by 43 CS of 15 minutes. The second most lopsided matchup was between 369 and um, Ali's, which would occur with 369's Gwen being ahead of Ali's as Nar by 41. Um, so that's right here. Uh, week seven, day two, 369 would blow Ali summoners early. And then, I mean, JDG Kanavi would go top lane twice to put 369 ahead, put Ali's in the grave and 369 rolled with it, which makes a lot of sense. Put a lot into 369's um, Gwen. And by 15 minutes, he has a 40 CS lead and uh, they're in a decent position. The next most lopsided matchup occurred at Fearness's detriment once again. Fearness appears on this list more than anybody else on the losing end. Fearness is NAR going down to um, Zika's Gwen by 35, so way over here. So we're getting closer to the, 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 the um, bulk of the matchups here. Um, so Fearness would TP early in week 9, week 10, day 5. So Fearness would TP early. So Zika has a slight edge. IG would then go top lane to get Zika ahead even farther. Zika then rewards them, solo killing Fearness. IG then go to top lane again. But in between these two moments of them going top lane, Fearness, so he dies the first time. And LGD try and like swap solos for a second, right? So Fearness is going to go mid as um, I don't remember if it's High Chow or... Um, Yeg. So I don't remember which one it was, but they go top lane to wash out and um, 
you know, kills Zika before Zika recalls. Fearness goes mid, he dies. He then respawns, goes top lane, and before 15 minutes, IG kill him again. So IG end up ahead by 35 CS in that top lane matchup. Um, a couple other top lane matchups. Gwen favored Cubes. Gwen beat Bubu by 34. Um, Breathes. Uh, Gwen beat Panda C by 34. I think that one was the biggest matchup that ended up resulting in a loss. So RNG and Breathe do not um, capitalize and snowball that lead. LNG and Panda C somehow come back in that one and win it. The biggest gap on the other side of the coin, so Nar over, over Gwen, occurred in the LCK. Um, Nuguri over Kana in week six, day one. Um, the early game was slightly Nugri favored, but not by all that much. Kana would then drop out of lane to, to take Rift Herald, which allowed Nugri a chance to get a little bit of an edge. And really, Nugri just kind of built this lead on his own. And uh, towards the end of the laning phase at 15 minutes, Damon would dive Kana, kill him, take the turret. And Nugri was up 33 CS with, I mean, little jungle intervention compared to the other other matchups. Um, you know, this is the segue that I mentioned a couple days ago when Nugri retired because, you know, Nugri was, was relevant in this video. Another matchup that was heavily NAR favored was Zeus into Kingen. Zeus would win by 32 in this one in week five. Um, Kingen would blow Ghost early. T1 would pressure a dive, forcing Kingen back off of his turret, allowing Zeus to continue to farm, get plates. Zeus would then force TP out of Kingen and really dominate the lane and, um, you know, roll with it and uh, get a 30 CS lead. Um, the top uh, LCS matchup on here occurred between Impact and Dokla. This was the third biggest gap um, in NAR versus Gwen. Impact on the NAR and Gwen uh, Dokla. So Dokla's Gwen. Um, this occurred week five, day one. CLG would go top lane early, actually. Dokla almost solo killed Impact. Contracts went up there, couldn't get it done. Impact would respond a couple minutes later, solo killing Dokla. EG would then pressure Dokla off the turret and then go top lane again and dive him successfully and kill him resulting in impact being ahead by 31 CS at 15 minutes. So Dokla actually had the edge early, very, very early, and um, couldn't do anything with it. Impact comes back and dominates the lane. Um, the other matchups on here, um, as far as Gwen over Nara is concerned, we have Cube over Fearness by 28. We have uh, Bin over Fearness by 24. So once again, more Fearness action. Um, the, th the Bin over Fearness occurred in spring because bin is represented on rng in this one um we have armit over finn so an lec matchup gwen over nar and uh breathe over allies this occurred in spring because breathe is on blg on my board here um and then lastly zeus over morgan uh by 21 so all those were gwen over nars um some nar over gwen action we have uh, Dudu over Kana by 31. We have Wayward over Bin by 26. So that's an interesting one, Wayward versus Bin. That's probably looking at this right now. That's probably the closest matchup and skill level we have. Um, Wayward obviously being a lot better than what we, you know, recently remember him for at Worlds in the end of summer. Very good in spring and um, for the better part of summer was was good at worst. Um Odo Omne over Adam by 25. Odo's Nar over Adam's Gwen. So that occurred in spring, obviously, because Adam's on there. Um, Doran over Dove by 24. Rich over Ale by 23. New over Bubu -Bu by 23. This being in spring, new on uh, Thunder Talk and Bubu -Bu on Team Wii. Uh, Breathe over Ga uh, Garvey in spring by 21. Um, and... Then Doran over Keen by 21 in the LCK. So a lot of LPL matchups on here. And obviously the LPL is a little more, um, uh, well, how do you put it? Like there could be a lack of parity, really. I mean, you look and think about it. There are quite a few LGDs on here. Hell, even the Garvey one is LGD. So LGDs represented one, two, three, four, five times on here. LGD is represented um, on the losing end. So that makes sense. LGD's top lane was atrocious last year 
Um, you see Ben appearing here. Um, oh, just once. Breathe was the most common person on here with four um, winning lanes. Um, right? No, three. Jeez. Oh, jeez. My mistake. Breathe won three lanes here. Doran won two. Zeus won two. Um, Wayward won two. Cube also with two. So there were a, couple, a few players with, um, you know, a couple representatives here. In a matchup that a lot of people would have considered handshake, when you think back to Season 12, you know, NAR winning 58%. Um, and it makes sense because anytime a NAR got ahead by a lot, it won. Where, really, I mean, there was only an eight-game difference, right? So let's just think theoretically for a second. If that is 10 out of 10, it's 54 to 54. 56 to 56. 56, no. No. If it's 50, if it's 50, what was it? 58%, so what is it? 58 to 42? Ah, well, I don't know what I'm talking about. Although this ended up having to be a re-recording, disclosure, uh, I still am all over the place, so. That's it for this video. If you liked it, like it. This is something different that I want to do. I do plan on doing a little bit um, of more um, in-depth look at this in the future. Uh, once I got all the numbers down, I thought to myself, oh, maybe I should have looked at ruins to maybe identify if these games are different than the other 80 games that were closer, right, in this window. Is there something you can identify that resulted in this and this without actually looking at it from a mechanical scouting point of view and more so just a very controllable win conditions when it comes to literally the controllables, ruin choice, itemization, um, summoner choice, and, and the like. Obviously, you know, if you pick Nara and Gwen, get the Nara ahead and you're probably going to win the game, which is something really weird to think about because we look at it and we say to ourselves, Gwen is so OP, how do you beat her? Over the season, NAR had the edge. So, that's it. Like I said, like the video, subscribe to the channel for daily League of Legends content. Comment down below the matchup you'd like me to do in the future. If this, vi if this video does decent or better than the content I've been putting out, um, I will be doing this in the future. It won't be every day because it is. it does take a little bit of time to do the research. But, a couple of weeks maybe as we fill in for the off season. Um, so, thank you for watching. Like I said, join... Um, the Discord. Follow me on Twitter. Become a YouTube member. Um, if you become a YouTube member, it gives me some money in my pocket, which could theoretically be used to try and help, you know, the channel be better. So, if you think that that is something to um, consider, thank you. Thank you for watching, and I hope you come back for more content.